Welcome to another demo from MicroRooster. Today's topic will be maps and GIS. MicroStrategy comes with built-in GIS capabilities. You still need to get some keys from either Google or ISRI or through MicroStrategy itself. You can get the ISRI key from MicroStrategy uh, by contacting their support. First thing you need to look for is the GIS folder which is in your MicroStrategy folder you might have Google map you might have ISRI if it's miss ISRI is missing you need to download it but if you have Google you can utilize it right here and you'll notice that um, your GIS connectors folder will be under your MicroStrategy if you do not have the ISRI and you need to use it we'll go to the ISRI there's a ISRI.com software ArcGIS ArcGIS online and uh, we get that and then you will see a download site um, once you get to the download site you will see the ability to download your own uh, version of the plugin so I'm gonna go ahead and download it and save it it's an ISO file once you download it you can access it immediately and what we care about is extracting the uh, correct um, uh, web server folder so we're using ASP and we need the, this folder the EM4 MSTR and we just click on extract to go get it it's very straightforward we're gonna plug it put it in the plugins folder in the MicroStrategy folder okay so you got that we're just gonna save it once it's done we go to that folder under the web ASPX and we will find the plugins we're going to go into the XML folder and uh, and uh, create an ISRI config if it's not created. So if it's there, then great. If it's not, what we need to do is create this. It's very simple, as you see, four lines. The most important part is this part is the key, the ISRI key. This part, you can get it from MicroStrategy if you don't have one purchased. So MicroStrategy will give you one with its support. You just need to contact them. Uh, once you get the key, you can create this file if you don't have it, the ESRI config, and it's an XML file. Uh, open it in the notepad, put your key in right here, and then just close it. Once you get the key again, you can get it from MicroStrategy support. Um, or if you have ISRI purchased previously, you can use the key directly from there. That's all you pretty much need to do to get it configured. Once you got that done, you are ready to go with the maps in the enterprise version. First thing I want to show you is you need uh, obviously GIS data. So here's a simple report that shows some facilities by latitude, longitude, it also shows the state and state ID. So very straightforward, simple Excel file that I embedded in the database. So it's already now embedded in this access database that I'm going to use. And here it is. This is the MicroStrategy uh, components that I created off of that sheet or that database. I have a few facts like the facility that I showed you. And it has the regular ID mapping, but it has also two pieces of the map, the latitude, the longitude. And here in the latitude or the longitude, you need to not only you know, associate with the uh, the table, but you also need to make sure it's has the geographical role that you want intended it to have. Okay. If you don't, it's okay, but it's better to do it here, and so you get your maps correct. And you want to do that for longitude as well. Okay. Same thing. The form really doesn't matter. The category used, I mean, does not matter much but choose one that's unique or create a new one once you get those facts you can you, those attributes you can use them in the report and just place them on the report and place a few metrics that we saw associated with them those metrics uh, just are simple metrics and sim through direct facts associated with the facility here we go we generate the report in desktop we see the, the two forms longitude latitude that are associated with this um, facility and the metrics next to them okay we need to click the remove the merging before we can use this in a map if you forget to do it here you can do it through the web but just we need to remove the merging before we can use it in the map now we're ready to go to the next step is creating our dashboard 
me create it in the desktop first just to show you how we're creating it then we can go to the web and explore more alright we're gonna choose that uh, met that report that we just created Okay, and let's drag it and see what we can do with it alright let me change the properties first because we need the widget to be modified to display a map and if you use the DHTML you can go and choose map and there you go the different component the different areas where it will work and I guess we're done at this point we can accept this so I'm going to keep it simple and just show that component uh, that uh, report as a map okay one more thing you need to modify is the the merge if you didn't do it already you just go to the grid and make sure you have no merged rows or columns okay so uncheck them if they are merged all right so now we've created this simple report with a map widget you might want to add some titles or do some more cosmetic but at any point the map itself should be embedded whether in a panel or panel stack it doesn't matter it's up, uh, whether it's a panel stack or not it just helps you with the interactivity once it's in a panel stack and I'm just going to give this a simple title save this call it map test Alright, let's go to the web and access this map test dashboard. A few seconds. There's our map. We don't see the data, right? So we need to make some additions because we didn't yet specify the markers. So I'm going to go to the properties of this grid and make sure they're not merged correct. Let's go and do widget properties and manipulate the markers. Let's add markers because we don't have them added yet. Obviously you can use bubbles or density map. Let's change the attribute to facility. Make sure we line up the longitude latitude. They're not automatically selected in the correct form. And we don't have areas to show. We just have point values. But if we did, we could use that. Okay, let's render the graph again and see what happens. All right, there we go. So we have now our data on the map in the United States. We have clusters and we have independent points. As you can see, each one is corresponding to the correct location. You can change the layout of the map to a different style depending on your needs. Okay. Zoom in, zoom out. Obviously, the clustering changes when you zoom in and zoom out. And you change the metric as well to whichever metric you decide to use. The location is not going to change in this case because you're just changing the value. You can add some more uh, information here that are specifically related to what you want to display when you hover over a point. Okay. Let's go back and do some more editing here. Let me show you something else. Again, like I said, you can use the bubbles instead. You can modify, you know, the ranges. And let's just use the default and show you what it does. Now, instead of putting dots, it's giving us a bubble. The bubble changes by the size of the metric associated with it. We can also add thresholds. Okay. Let's add a threshold on one of the metrics. Let's just do something random, like uh, greater than, I think our values were in the thousands, thousands of megawatts. This data was available online, so I just downloaded it for uh, waste facilities in the United States. All right, so now we made those changes. We added a threshold. Let me render it again. Here's the data. I just want to check, is it working? Yes, the threshold's working before I generate the uh, map view. And here we see now our bubbles are colored uh, and into two colors. And still the clusters will show up as a bundle until you click on them. Then you will see the different thresholding or colors. All right, great. 
Now let's use the visual insight component, the more advanced strategy or methodology. You might like this better depending on your needs. Let's go and select our data set and now we have our metrics that we need to pull in. Let's go by facility, choose the metrics that we want to display. All right, great. Now we just need to change the visual. This is very easy when done in the visual inside the analytics uh, strat uh, methodology using the web or using your desktop, the analytics desktop tool, whichever one you have available. If you're not using enterprise, you would have the desktop. We're also going to add thresholds on the metrics. This is a little bit easier done here. So I'm just going to use standard thresholding. And there you go, our values are now thresholded by the uh, green, red, and yellow. I'm going to change the graph here just to give it more uh, a real look or a more actual look. You can also add more visualizations to create interactivity. Let me just do something simple like see state. One of these metrics. Let's create a bar graph out of it. Let me swap it to make it more visible. All right. Now let me go to our map and let's make it dynamic. So I'm going to go to the properties tab and change it to. Well, let's I change it first to a density. One more method. And let's see what we can do with the density. Let's go and change and use it as a filter. So I just did the density just to show you that there's different ways to view this. Once I add the filter, now my selection allows me to interact with the other graphics. In I'm going to go ahead and use the state instead of facility here just to show you the area maps. And the area allows me to, uh, again, to de this d demonstrate and threshold the values. But now instead of using points, I'm associated at the state level, as you saw. All right, so now my thresholds are at the state. This might be more useful for you. Depends if you need the point or you need to cluster things, but at a different level, like the state, you still can zoom in on the specific state or area and view the independent facilities. So you have that capability as well, and you can keep selecting. And obviously, it's still going to interact with your uh, graph. So as we saw, we were able to convert the points into um, an area within the Visual Insight component. This is all using the ISRI. Uh, the Google uh, map is not much different, but it's just got a few more, uh, a few different uh, properties associated with it. Here's some more options that you can control if you need to, but there, that's getting more into detail. But you're just using this and the properties here, you can get the idea of how to manipulate the graph. So, you know, you start adding more flavor to it, like legends, etc., to make it more useful for your users. Thank you very much and have a good day.